All right, guys, let's get some NCAA basketball picks and props for Monday, February 19th, slate of games. Trey, let's take a look at that leaderboard. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went 1-0 on the game picks. That's because I gave out Charlotte minus 6.5 versus Wichita State. I have a lot of confidence in it, and they showed up here. They were up double digits pretty early in this game and just, you know, cruised to the end of the game. They were covering for this uh, at halftime, and then uh, easy does it for us. Yeah, and I had 0-1 no uh, day. I had UCLA minus 2.5. They shot all the way up to minus 5.5. Um, they did lose at the buzzer on a Carlson tip in, losing by one point. This game, it was washed after the 10 minutes. Sebastian Mack, UCLA's best player, he decided to assault somebody at half court. He was ejected from the game. He threw the people's elbow into someone's throat and nearly killed him. So after that point, I, I was I was really hoping UCLA would pull it off. Um, they got up by 6, even by 8 points in the second half. But Utah – First road win in nearly two, three months. So um, good for the Utes. Good for the Utes. They got to win. I take a loss on the day. Trey, let's go to the player props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I want to know on the player props as well. I gave out Malvi Leones to go over 20 and a half PRAs versus Northern Iowa. He almost hit this on points alone. He had a very slow first half, but the Bradley got down big at halftime. And then they played their entire offense through him. And uh, we hit pretty early in the second half. So shout out Leones. Yep, and then I had another 0-1 day. I had Chuck Harris to go over 13.5 points going up against Memphis. SMU dominated Memphis. They scored 100-plus points. Chuck just didn't get enough shots up. He had 10 in the game. I was looking for a little bit more action from Chuck Harris. So we went 0-1 on that play. Trey, let's go to the group play. We both cashed on this one. Ohio State outright against Purdue. We got them at plus 8.5. We did say they were going to win this game for the interim head coach, and they did pull it off. So shout out Ohio State for getting that win on your home floor. Let's go to the game of uh, the group play for tomorrow. Have you uh, put that? There we go. Kansas State. Going up against Texas, your Kansas State Wildcats on the road. Texas, minus 8.5, over under 139.5. Have you start? Yeah, guys, uh, I'm wearing my K-State shirt. We all know where I'm going. Give me K-State here, <laughs> plus 8.5 in this game. And I feel like there's a good chance for them to win this game straight up. I know it's a different K-State team in the past. But the last two times we've traveled to Austin on road in conference play, we've walked out of there with a straight-up win, let alone a cover. So I do have a lot of confidence in this play with Kansas State. Yes, like I said, it's a different team. We have Tyler Perry, and, and he's up and down this year. But I think most of our offense is going to be played through what our key player is here in Cam Carter. Carter, he has been amazing, especially on the road. He kind of puts K-State on his back on the road, and I feel like that's what's going to have to happen for us to pull off the upset here. But at the end of the day, eight and a half points is too much. K-State's defense is very good. Their offense is kind of no bueno. But at the end of the day, K-State's defense is going to be able to keep this game close enough to not be able to lose by double digits. So give me K-State here, plus eight and a half. Can't do it. Can't do it. We're laying We're laying Texas here, minus eight and a half to Longhorns. This is a spot game for Texas. They're back home. They just got their ass kicked by Houston. Everything's going to come easy to Texas in this game. They're going to win this game by double digits. They might even win this game by 20-plus. Kansas State defensively, 69.1 points per game. Um, but I broke this down earlier. They've given up 70-plus points in seven consecutive games. Texas is going to score 80-plus on this team. I like Texas. I think this is going to be a blowout. Kansas State – when you take them off their home floor, they're not a very good team. So give me Texas, minus the eight and a half. We will be splitting on this play. Trey, let's go to the plays for tomorrow. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to be talking about this Lamar going up against Southeastern Louisiana game. And this is going to be a very fun game to watch. The Southland Conference is honestly <laughs> pretty entertaining this season. And these two teams, they find themselves near the top of those standings. And Lamar, they come to this game with a 14 and 11 record. They're also 14, 8 and 1 ATS. But the Cardinals, they are 2-10 and 10 on the road this season. They have not been able to translate and win games on the road this year. In southeastern Louisiana, they enter this game with a 13-13 and 13 record. They're also 11-11-1 ATS. But the Lions, they're 8-2 and two at home this year. And they've also won six straight games entering this one by an average score of 77-68. to 68. And I kind of expect the home team to continue that momentum here in this game. Give me southeastern Louisiana here on the money line at minus 110. I love it that we're getting this game at basically a pick em. Because these two teams, they've already played once this year. And Lamar, they did win that home game by 10 points. But I think that's going to expect the Lions to come in this game with a point to prove here. And if Southeastern Louisiana can win this game, that's going to put them in the number two spot in the conference standings. And we all know that that's a huge spot to get that bye week in the conference tourney. And with March on their mind and with this team being red hot at the right time, they're going to win six straight games. And I think they're going to make it seven here. Southeastern Louisiana they're going to win this game at the free throw line. As a team, they shoot 73% from the free throw line, which is top 100 in college basketball. And Lamar, they love to foul as well. They foul the 16th most times in college basketball. That's because they allow an average of 24.2 free throws per game. And if Southeastern Louisiana can get to the line that much and shoot their average here, they're going to win this home game pretty easily. So give me Southeastern Louisiana here on the money line versus Lamar. 
Yeah, Trey, I like the play there. For my play today, I'm going to be looking at Virginia going on the road to face off against Virginia Tech. This is a rivalry matchup with the two Virginia teams going head-to-head. Usually I take the home team here as a small favorite, but I'm going to take Virginia in this game, plus two and a half. Virginia, they do have their problems offensively. This is one of the best defenses in the country. They also struggle from the free throw line, something we learned on Saturday whenever they played Wake Forest, only making one of their 12 attempts. But with all their flaws, they are still a top 25 team, and that's because of the defense. They're going to win this game because of that defense. Virginia is just allowing 57.9 points per game, the third best in the nation, allowing opponents to shoot 39.4% on average from the field and 31.2% from behind the arc. They will suffocate you on the defensive side, forcing a ton of turnovers and steals. And they're also very good at blocks. They have 5.2 of those per game. And we have seen these two teams play already this season at Virginia. They did come away with a 65-57 to win over Virginia Tech. Virginia did cover the spread in that game as well. And while it was a close matchup for Virginia at home, Virginia Tech played great basketball in that game. They shot 38.9% from the field in that game, right around where Virginia is allowing on the season. And they made 11 three-point shots, and they still were not unable to beat Virginia. Virginia forced 15 turnovers in that game, had 10 steals, and that's going to be more the same in this game. I don't think Virginia Tech is all of a sudden going to be able to protect the ball. They struggle against smothering defenses, and if they don't hit their threes in this game, they're going to get blown out by Virginia. In the last game, they made 11, and if they, and they lost by eight points in that game against Virginia. This might get out of hand if they can't hit their threes. So I'm going to take the home, away team here, plus two and a half as the play. I'm going to sprinkle on the money line as well if you like that as well. Virginia plus two and a half as the play. Trey, let's go to the props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go back to our group play game. I'm going to go with Cam Carter to go over his points versus Texas. I really love this over for Carter in this game because I believe that we're going to see him go off for a few reasons here. And the first reason why I think that is because of his matchup here versus Texas. Carter, he is a guy that takes a ton of three-pointers. He averages taking just over six per game. In Texas, they do not do a great job at defending the perimeter either. In fact, they allow opponents to shoot 34.5% from the field which is bottom 100 in college basketball. So if Carter can make his three-pointers here in this game, his points are going to start piling up pretty quickly. And I believe that the volume is going to be there for him here in this game too because the Wildcats, they kind of depend on him whenever they travel on the road. He takes more shots and he shoots a higher percentage whenever he plays on the road. And that's turned into an average of 17.9 points per game. And I expect him to be able to hit that average here at least, but I would not be surprised if he walks out of this game with a 20-piece nugget. So give me Cam Carter to go over his points versus Texas. Yeah, Trey, I like that play there. Uh, for my player prop today, I'm going to be looking at that Houston against Iowa State game. I'm taking Curtis Jones of Iowa State to go over his total points. The Cyclones, they're going to need every man on this roster to pour in points so they want to come away with a win uh, on the road here to upset Houston. I believe Curtis Jones, who's only averaging just 10.1 points per game, is going to be the key factor from deep in this game against Houston. It's very difficult to beat this Houston team because of the way they play defense, and that's how Iowa State likes to play as well. But whichever one of these teams hits their threes is going to be the winner of this one. Curtis Jones in the first matchup against Houston at home. He only played 17 minutes. He did not make a shot in the game, and he had a couple bad games after that. But since the middle of January of this year, he has been very effective from the field. He has scored 11-plus points in seven consecutive games. And this is a guy who is only averaging 10.1 points per game. He has shot five-plus three-point attempts in six of the last seven games, and he has made at least two from the field or two from three in six of the last eight games. He was a non-factor in the first game against Houston. I don't think that's going to be the case this time around. This is the transfer out of Buffalo. Ever heard of that team, guys? They're out of the MAC Conference. This guy was born with the blood of a winner coming out of that program. He's going to be able to make a ton of shots this game, especially from deep. Give me Curtis Jones to get it done from the outside against this Houston Cougars team over his total points as the play. Trey, let's go to the graphic. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went with Southeastern Louisiana here on the money line versus Lamar. The team's on a hot streak. They've won six in a row. They're playing here at home. They're getting hot in conference play just when you want to do it. Also going with Cam Carter to go over his points versus Texas. The guy, he is my K-State Wildcats go-to guy on the road, and I don't think anything's going to change right there. Yeah, I'm going to take Virginia on the road, plus two and a half against Virginia Tech. They're the better team. I think they're going to smother them on defense, and they're not going to let Virginia Tech at 11 threes in this game. Then I'm going with Curtis Jones, over 9.5 points, maybe go up to 10.5 points on this one, over total points against Houston. I think he's going to rain threes in this game against Houston. That's the only way you can beat this Cougar team. I like Curtis Jones to get it done from the outside. Guys, it's going to do it for the NCAA Basketball Plays and Props for Monday, February 19th, Slate of Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Super Bowl. We also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. We also have a new game. It's going to be Trey and myself versus the Bear Pack. 
You can call it pros versus Joes if you want. I don't really like the name because I don't consider us pros. I don't consider you guys Joes. But, Trey, if you want to go to the YouTube channel, this is how you guys play. You're going to go to our YouTube channel. You're going to hit the community tab. We've been in the community tab a lot this season. Uh, you're going to go to the community tab. We have our plays for the day. So, obviously, the intro is not going to have plays for today. But these are our plays for our next video. It's the Pelicans minus 2.5, the Heat minus 5, Quinnipiac minus 4.5, and, and Wisconsin minus 10.5. Those are Trey's and myself's plays. What you guys are going to do is pick which one you think will not hit, meaning you're going to fade us, which is pros versus Joes, which is the game called. But you guys are going to try to pick which one is not going to hit. If you guys win, you're going to get a point. If we win, we're going to get a point. We're going to run it Friday through Friday every single week. Whichever team has the most wins, so 4-3, to 6-2, to two, whatever it is, that person or group will win fifty dollars. If the community wins, we're going to do a wheel spin for the community. If we win, I don't know how we're going to get our. I don't know how we're going to get our cheddar, but uh, you guys are just going to have to subscribe, I guess, more. But that's the game. Hopefully, everybody understands it. Trey, let's get into the video. Look at the leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right. Subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, bearsprofitplays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 